So we've talked about getting to Mars, we've talked about how we get air, but there's another long list of things yes. we're going to need to actually colonise Mars. How about water? How are we gonna, what are you going to do for water on Mars? Um, it's obviously a key one, uh, and if we talk about in other parts of the course, uh, in particularly the planets and solar system section, Mars actually used to be quite wet, right Paul? We don't really know why, but it certainly at some point had lots of water, uh, but it's, it doesn't have any oceans or lakes at the moment, it's all pretty much frozen. That's right. So, you know, while we uh, people always talk about, oh, Mars used to have this water, we actually just care about what's there to use now, and the options are limited at best. Uh, and in fact, when you take this, you know, kind of global snapshot of Mars squeezed into a 2D projection, you can look at where different pockets of things are. So, for instance, we can look at um, where glaciers are. In fact, there are evidence of glaciers on Mars, right? There's quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're in pockets and that sort of thing. Now, glaciers, even if you could go to a very dense spot where there's a lot of them, probably aren't that useful. And the glaciers we're talking about aren't the glaciers here on Earth, right, Paul? No, I mean, actually, uh, you can't have liquid water on the surface of Mars at the moment. That uh, it would just evaporate immediately. Even ice would only barely survive. So anything you're going to get is going to get mixed in with soil and buried a bit, except near the poles. Exactly. So unless you want to go and set up shop on the poles, which no one really does, you're going to have to go somewhere else, which means you're not going to be looking for these sorts of pockets of ice. You're going to be looking for potentially water mixed in with the rock. Yes. And we do see a lot of this everywhere on Mars, right? Everywhere we look, we take images, spectroscopy, looking at those signatures of elements and see water contained in rocks. And we're not talking about something like the moon where it might be one gram of water ice in a cubic meter of rock. There are a lot of these rocks which might be a very large fraction of them might be water mixed in with it. It's much wetter than the moon. That's right. I mean, when we take this snapshot and look at the different colors, colors being blue is kind of like clay and we get some silicates, even in this seemingly generic area of Mars, there's signs of a lot of water mixing with rock, and, and these pockets are everywhere, as you said. That's right. So we could potentially look at the rocks, but we can also, as you said, look at other places underneath where there is ice. Now, we have to be caref careful here, though, because Mars is cold, right? Yes. So lots of things can be ice on Mars, yes? That's right. So, for example, the polar caps. Some of it is water ice, but at least in winter, some of it is carbon dioxide ice, dry ice, if you like. Exactly. Useful and for other fun things, but maybe not useful for living on? Uh, you don't want to drink it. <laughs> in fact, it, it, I suppose you can drink it, make your drink fizzy. You mix the water and the carbon dioxide and you've so, got soda. <laughs> so look, I guess, yeah, I guess we have sparkling water on Mars if we really need. Maybe that's a way of live. But, you know, again, when we look in spectral bands, we're looking at reflected sunlight here what signatures they're picking up, this is a signature of ice. You might say, hey, hurrah, but this is all carbon dioxide ice, not even at the poles. This is just another part of Mars. In fact, everywhere we look, we see some pockets of carbon dioxide ice, but we also do see genuine parts of mix. We have green, which is the water ice, that rich water ice we want. We see blue, the so carbon dioxide ice, and then we kind of get mixtures of it uh, in the red. So. It actually could be possible to find ice, and the ice isn't too un far underneath the surface, right? Yeah, we're probably looking at something a bit like a permafrost, uh, as you find in the um, Arctic regions on Earth, uh, where the uh, ice is mixed in with the soil and stays frozen all the time. Um, and that's probably the sort of thing we're talking about over large areas of Mars. And, and as you said, this is the key. It's unlike the moon, where there is maybe so, but it's small quantities and specialized quantities it's pretty ubiquitous. It's kind of just lots of places. You don't need to really choose a special spot to find a lot of this ice. That's right. Pretty much anywhere you land, somewhere nearby, you're going to be able to dig in and uh, boil it off and let the liquid water flow away from the rock and uh, you have water if you can melt it. So that's going to be the key, right, is can we find ice and then can we melt it? So maybe potentially it's easier to look for liquid water. That would be nice. Well, you know, when we talk about these, uh, these craters and where this ice is, we also have to get to the crater, right? We also have to get into it. And so this is the flight over Korolev Crater, uh, and it's just also a glorious video to watch in an animation. But when we talk about where this ice is contained, when we look at it and we fl flow into specifically one of the poles as you're talking about here, it is embedded deep in the ground, but it is on the surface. So it is 
readily accessible. For the most part. But frozen solid. But frozen solid. But again, there's a lot of it. You can really get into it. And while this is one crater of many, eh, you can choose and pick as you want. Yeah, I mean, this is a crater fairly near the poles. The craters near the equator, uh, craters near the equator don't have um, ice and anything like this quantity for there. You'd have to mix, uh, dig it out from the rock. Um, I'm not sure if you'd want to go near the poles. The poles gives you much more water, but also will give you less solar power. And I mean, Mars is cold enough even on the hot tropical day on the equator. So keeping yourself warm if you go to some polar region just to get ice might not be a good idea. But it, you certainly do have craters like this with large amounts of ice up near the poles. Exactly. And I think this is going to, you know, this is always the trade off when we talk about colonizing living. It's, well, OK, great. It may have a lot of ice, but you're right. It's going to have less sunlight. It's going to be colder. It's already going to be harder to work. So you're going to have to find those trade-offs, but it does appear to be ice can be the key across Mars. But is there any way the ice is liquid? We don't have to bother melting it? Well, we should find out, because if that's the case, it would save us a lot of trouble. And if obviously it's liquid water, presumably means it's a bit warmer than, say, the poles, and maybe a little bit easier to operate on. Mm -hmm. 